Okay, so I'm very excited today. We are going to speak to a pediatric dentist, and we're going to learn the secrets about how to become a pediatric dentist. So I want to invite one of my very close friends, who I actually went to NYU with. Her name is Dr. Dekansky now. She used to be Jacqueline. Now she's Dr. Dekansky. So <laughs> can I call you Jacqueline on the show? Is that okay? Please do. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's amazing. Um, I remember taking pre-med and pre-dental courses with you. That's right. And fast forward, you're now a, you're, you're now a fully fledged pediatric dentist. <laughs> it's hard for, to, for me to believe as well. So why pediatric dentistry, if I may ask? Um, sure. Why pediatric dentistry or why dentistry? Well, why? Okay, let's let's talk about why dentistry first. Okay. Why become a dentist versus a doctor? Well, I think they're very different fields, and it has to do with um, the individual's interests and passions. Um, so I, I don't think it's compare. I think it's comparing apples and oranges. But some of the things that I love about dentistry. Um, are that it's a surgical profession with an artistic component. So you get to help people all day long. You get to work with your hands um, and create, um, improve people's dental health. Um, it's a very hands-on profession, which is nice. Um, so it's very I, visually oriented dentistry. Yes, definitely. There is actually an entire section of the dental admissions exam that is a visual or a perception ability test. Um, so you are supposed to demonstrate the ability to kind of visualize. And orient objects in space by looking at it on paper. And yep. how, how, I mean, when you were in dental school, did you feel like you used those, those, those skill sets to kind of configure teeth? Absolutely. Yeah. A lot more than I expected to. We had to carve teeth uh, out of wax, or we had to kind of shape the anatomy of every kind of tooth from wax, um, and then that was an experience. Um, but truly understanding where you are in a tooth when you're working on it is very important. So, so it's, a very, it's very artistic. It's a very artistic space. In terms of when you're a dentist, you're not... You're not just a doctor. You're also you're very much like an artist, like a plastic surgeon, right? In terms of there's a lot of cosmetics that go into it. Absolutely. And some dentists, as you just alluded to, take that artistic component of dentistry to the next level and specialize, so to speak, or focus a lot on cosmetic dentistry and that, that aspect of it, of the field. Okay. So fast forward. So how – I'm assuming dental school is four years, right? It's like medical school in terms of the intensity of the curriculum. Yes, four years. So when did you decide uh, in, in your dental journey um, you want to do pediatrics or, you know, any, any field in dentistry? I'm, you know, just to educate me and also the listeners, uh, you know, I went to medical school, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of decide in your end of third year, beginning of your fourth year, that's when you start applying. Is that the same process in, in dental school? It's. Similar. Everyone, um, everyone is different. I think, you know, just like in medical school, you have those people who kind of know what specialty they want to go into early on. Um, it's the same in dental school. And then there are those people who decide later on. I think it's important to have an open mind when you enter dental school or medical school um, so that you can truly explore all the different specialties before making your decision. Now, correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but I remember that your father's a dentist. Correct. Okay. And that's how I was introduced. And, and to he's dentist. a pediatric dentist. No, he's a general dentist. Oh, so you went, the, you went the other direction. <laughs> yes, he he called me crazy for wanting to work with children only, and I called him crazy for wanting to work with adults. Only. Well, if he knows his daughter, he knows his daughter loves kids. So <laughs> that is true. <laughs> okay, Thank but you. he was he was an inspiration behind you becoming a dentist. Um, yes, he was. He was how I was introduced to dentistry as well. I remember he fixed one of my teeth and, um, you know, your dad is always your hero, but when he fixed a tooth that was bothering you or hurting, that status of hero was only elevated. And I realized I wanted to help people 
in, in that kind of a special way. I think you and I have similar stories, except my father's a plastic surgeon, and I had one of my eyebrows when I was little. I fell between the couch, and one of my eyebrows actually kind of partially came off. Oh, no. And he sutured it up, and, I mean, that's part of the reason why, you know, I mean, there's many reasons, but that's one of one of many reasons. But we're here to talk about you and not about me. No, no, no. But see, that was a blessing and a curse, as was my toothache, because it introduced us to a field that we're very passionate about. So would you say that most people in dental school have parents or family members that are already dentists that inspired them to go to dental school? Or is it a mix? It's definitely a mix. Um, many of the students in my class had similar stories of being inspired by other dentists, whether they were family members or not. Um, but, you know, dentistry is, is something that you're introduced to and may spark something in you and you may choose to pursue it. Okay, so fast forward, you decided you want to do pediatric dentist, dentistry. Why? The big <laughs> question. Why pediatric dentistry specifically? Yes. A few reasons. Firstly, just I truly do love spending time with children. Um, that was the case for me throughout my life in different in different aspects of it. Um, secondly, I really enjoy the prevention aspect of pediatric dentistry. It's a little bit stronger with children. Um, it's equally as strong with children as with adults, but um, I feel you can make a bigger impact on children. Um, because you're truly setting them up for success, hopefully, in terms of dental health and their approach to visiting the dentist and dental visits. Dr. Dukansky, if I may ask, where did you go to dental school? Sorry, Dr. Copeland, I couldn't hear you. You broke said, up. Dr. Dukansky, where did you go to dental school? I went to dental school at NYU. Oh, you went NYU. And then after that, you went to what program yeah. for, your, for your residency? Okay. I did my pediatric dentistry residency at Yale. Oh, at Yale. Okay. We have a very smart dentist on the phone. <laughs> um, so what's great is you have these kids at a very young age, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they continue to be patients. Is that part of the continuity of seeing these patients every, was it every six months? Is that the routine or is it once a year that, that pediatric patients come in for, for their teeth to be cleaned and fixed and issues along those lines? Sure. We see patients based on their risk levels. So if a patient is healthy and we're not monitoring anything um, super closely, I'd see a patient every six months. But there are children um, who have certain areas of concern that I'd like to see a little bit more frequently. So I have patients who I see every six months and have patients who I see every three months um, and then everywhere in between. Okay. And so when you were at Yale, what's a... I mean, how long is a residency program? Is it is it like medical school where it's four to five years? Or are you like basically done with dental school and you're out and you're a dentist? Um, just like with medical school, when you're done with dental school, you're out, you're a dentist. But you do have to proceed with residency. Pediatric dentistry specifically is two to three years long, depending oh, wow. on what. And why? So what what is the residency entail? Are you doing... A lot of clinics. Are you working in the hospital? Is it outpatient? There are school-based or uh, there are school-based um, and hospital-based programs, and they're all different. The one I went to was kind of a good hybrid of, of both, but we saw patients on a regular basis in an outpatient clinic, um, and we also took patients to the operating room, and you know when needed, had inpatients as well. So we also did. What, is a, what does a typical day look like in the, in the life of a, of a pediatric resident? There are various rotations, but if you're in clinic, you're seeing patients um, during clinic hours, so 8 to 5. If you are doing sedations, you are um, working with an anesthesiologist and performing dental work under sedation. Um, if you're in the operating room, then you're in the hospital Okay. And you're working on children under general anesthesia. So you get wide exposure to a lot of different clinical cases. Yes. Nice. I was lucky to go to a, a program that allowed me that. Okay. And how many residents are in these programs on a yearly basis? My program has six, and it was on the larger side. So is it two per year, or is it six per year? 
Six per year. Six per year. Oh, wow. So there's there's quite a few spots that are available uh, for pediatric dentistry at, at the Yale program, but I'm assuming across the country there's other there's a lot of other spots for pediatric dentistry as well. Yes. Other programs tend to have fewer spots. This is one of the larger ones. And Yale's program is two years long. Now, how did you prepare to become a pediatric dentist in dental school? Did you have to do research? Uh, I'm assuming grades are very important, obviously. Um, could you could you give us some insight? Sure. Um, grades are important, of course. Research is important. Um, outreach is important. So I spent a lot of time um, doing that. And uh, NYU Dental School is unique in having honors programs in the different specialties. So um, when you decide you're interested in one, you can apply to be uh, in an honors in pediatrics, for example, program. And it uh, allows you to work side by side with the pediatric dentistry residents they have. So you're on. The so just by being in that special program, that allowed you to get a little more hands on exposure. Okay. Correct. Yep. And uh, immersing yourself in the field, no matter what specialty you plan to pursue, is a good idea. Did you do any research when you were in dental school? I did. What type of research? Um, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> do you remember what research you did? <laughs> uh, it actually didn't have anything to do with pediatric dentistry, um, but it, it had to do with breaking down barriers that dentists have when... Um, opening sensitive, to sensitive topics of conversation with your patients. And although that's not directly involved in pediatric dentistry, it definitely comes up on a regular basis. Uh, well, I'm sure you cope, you have to deal with a lot of the parents, right? When you're a pediatric dentist, it's not just taking care of the kids. You're also kind of consoling the parents and making sure that they feel comfortable with the procedures that you're doing, right? Exactly. Absolutely. We also have to um, bring up sensitive topics with our teenager patients like tobacco use, alcohol use, vaping is big these days. Oh, things yeah. like <laughs> Amazing. I, I don't I remember when we were younger, I don't even think vaping existed. So that's a whole that's a whole other field that you're you're dealing with. It's it's very exactly. interesting. But basically what you're saying is that research is important. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to do research in the respective field that you want to ultimately pursue because you don't necessarily know that as a first or a second year dental student. Exactly. So what type of procedures do you do on a daily basis? Um, a gamut of things. Uh, the most basic, I guess, um, being a regular checkup and cleaning. Um, but arguably the most important since that's where di diagnosis lies. Um, and then, you know, fillings, baby root canals, we call them. The actual term for those for that procedure is pulpotomy. Uh, crowns, extractions, space maintainers, uh, many different things. Okay. And what, what excites you about the field in terms of where you see the field's going to be in the future? Do you see it evolving? I mean, do you see more women in the field versus men? Um, is it the technology? Um, is it the uh, advancements in the in the way we do certain procedures? Um, why should someone be excited, uh, essentially, to do pediatric dentistry? It's everything. a big question, but <laughs> everything you just mentioned. Um, the technology is great. Even um, the small change of now almost all operatories having televisions mounted someplace where the patient can see them changes the experience for a child dramatically. I mean, soon kids will be laying back, getting their dental work done while wearing 3D glasses and being, you know, virtually in a different world. Wow. Um, and then, you know, in the dental field, the new materials that are out there are extremely impressive. And um, they perform unlike the materials of the past. It's really nice and exciting to see what, what they can do. So it's, it's an exciting time to be in the field for sure. Now, how difficult is it to match into pediatrics or dentistry? Um, it's tough. Many pediatric dental programs require you to complete a general dentistry residency first. So if you're planning to pursue pediatric dentistry straight out of dental school, you're limited in the programs that you can apply to. Um, but don't let that discourage you. I think 
you know, still, if it's, if it's truly your passion, I think you should still go for it. So even uh, if you don't match that year for pediatric dentistry, do that intern year essentially and, and reapply and don't be discouraged because you, you will eventually match if you really stick with it. Yes. Okay. I like that. That's a, that's a, it's all about positive thinking. Um, so now I'm going to ask you a few other questions so people have a little longer term view of pediatric dentistry. How much do you make, if I may ask, not you specifically, but like what's the average income? Do you have some sort of idea in terms of what a pediatric dentist makes? You know, my view is limited to what a New York City pediatric dentist makes, and I don't think it's fair to use that number. <laughs> well, no, you're uh, right, because the, the standard of the, the – I want to say that the cost of living in major cities is is crazy. Um, I know, for instance, a nurse starting out in Manhattan can make $100,000. But you have to factor in that there's crazy expenses. So anyway, yes, we, we understand that. So thank you for pointing that out to the listeners. That and also the market is extremely saturated in New York um, and any other major city. So... You can make a lot more when you when you consider living outside of a major city. Okay, that makes sense. So, what's the range? We need a, we need a, we needed some idea what it's what it what it's like in, in a in a major city. I truly don't know what the range is. Okay, that's okay. Okay, so what type of advice would you give to an aspiring dentist? Start exploring your options early on in dental school. Um, you want to make yourself a competitive applicant if you do want to specialize. So be as curious as can as you can when you when you enter dental school. Um, shadow all the specialties. Um, really make sure that you're investigating all your options early on. And if a specialty speaks out to you, great. If not, general dentistry is fantastic too. But explore all your options early on and, um, and keep an open mind. And do you advise them to go to conferences or do any particular rotations? Absolutely. Um, every school is different in terms of rotations. Uh, but if you can shadow the different clinics that are, you have in your school, that's a good idea. <coughs> Bless you. Excuse me. Thank you. And conferences are a great idea, too. Um, they allow you to network early on. You can hear about your colleagues' experiences in, <coughs> excuse me, in their dental schools. Um, and it just, you know, again, it opens your mind a little bit more to what else is out there and what's going on in the field. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Dukansky. Do you have anything else you want to share with potential pediatric dentists? Before we, before we end the show tonight? <laughs> uh, it's a great field to be in. It's a true privilege to be a pediatric dentist and to serve the youngest members of our community. Um, there's no better feeling than having a child who is fearful and anxious um, and, and needs help uh, and seeing your intervention be helpful in terms of it. it having to do with the child being less fearful and more brave, more trusting in future visits, um, or whether it be with a parent who's improved home care and now knows what to do to keep this child's oral health, improve this child's oral health, um, to the child, him or herself, being more excited about taking care of his or herself, her body. Uh, it's, it's just the best feeling in the world when you, when you feel like you've made a difference in this little young human's life. Um, so if you're interested in pediatrics, pursue it. It's a wonderful field. Dr. De Dr. Dukansky and Jacqueline, I want to thank you. Um, it's, it's amazing to see how far you've come. Um, and it just demonstrates that hard work does pay off. So if you want to do pediatric dentistry, this is a great interview to watch. And thank you again so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me.